Good morning, Living Hope family. So happy to see you on this Wednesday morning. Thank you for joining me for another edition of Living Hope Today. We're going to look into God's Word today, and today's topic is something we all desire. Today we're going to talk about love. Jesus has a lot to say about love, and as you go through the New Testament, it gets defined. We find out how God loves and what it means that God is love. And today, we're going to look at a passage in 1 John. Let's see if we can get it here. There it is. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. Now look what John says first. He says that one of the defining characteristics of people who know God is that they love. We better figure out what love means because it says in that verse, did you see it? That God is love. That he his very character, his essence, is love. Notice it doesn't say that love is God. Some people in our world today would want to say that love is chief over everything. No, God is God. God is the Lord. But God's essential essence, his character, is a character of love. Now, how does this get defined for us? Well, if you look at the next verse, it says, in this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. Now, did you catch that? In this, God has manifested his love among us. What did he do? Now, you and I, when we think about love, most of our culture, we think about love as emotion, right? Warm, fuzzy feelings, the hair on the back of your neck stands up. You can't wait to see that person again. And all of a sudden you say, oh, I'm in love because you're having such a feeling about somebody, right? God doesn't define love like that. That's not how he thinks about it. Look at this. He says that when he demonstrates his love, what does he do? He takes action. Do you see that in verse 9? He sends his only son into the world so that we might live through him. So when God says he loves us, he's not just talking about some warm, fuzzy feeling he has about us or some emotional response. He's talking about the idea that he's going to take action on our behalf. Action that's going to benefit us, that's going to bring us to life in him. That's how he defines love. Now, is he loving us because we're lovely? Well, I don't know about you. Well, I do know about you. None of us are lovely, right? We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. God is not loving us based on our loveliness. God is looking at us and saying, I'm going to demonstrate love to them by sending my most precious son, to them so that they can live through him. And look what it says after that. In this is love. Here comes the definition. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Uh-oh, now there's a huge word. Propitiation. Do you have to go to seminary to figure that one out? No, you really don't. Look at this. We're going to look at what it means here. When you define propitiation, that's just a big word, but the basic idea of it is one of appeasement, one of satisfaction, specifically towards God. Propitiation is a two-part act that involves appeasing the wrath of God and being reconciled to him. That's what it means when this verse tells us that the Lord Jesus was the propitiation for our sins. So what are we being told here? Well, God is love. If you're going to follow God, one of the characteristics of our lives has to be that we're people that love. But we don't love just by having a warm, fuzzy feeling about everybody. We might have that feeling, but that's not the essence of love as God defines it. God defines love as taking action on behalf of somebody regardless of how lovely they may be. It's not about them. It's about the character of God in us, that we love others and sacrifice and give just like Jesus gave, right? What did he do? 
He gave himself for us. God's love gave himself. He sacrificed everything so that we might have eternal life in Jesus Christ. That's the essence of love. Now you take that with you today as you meet your boss or your neighbor or the guy at the grocery store or the lady at the bus stop, wherever life might take you today. Ask yourself, am I willing to love this person regardless of how lovely they may appear? Am I willing to love them like God has loved me? Oh, that'll take us a long way today. My name is Scott Kalavik. I pastor a church called Living Hope Community Church. Uh, we would love for you to drop in on us and worship on some Sunday if you're available. Uh, there's a website on your screen that will get you to all the detailed information about time and place and all of that. Please feel comfortable. Come and be our guest. Come as you are. It's not a pretentious place. It's a place where you're going to be loved. Also, I want to make you aware of a website we've developed called RUA Disciple. Uh, if you go to that website, there's lessons, there's study guides, there's quizzes, there's a Bible reading program. There's a lot of stuff there to help us develop as followers of Jesus Christ. Not just to help us develop, but you know, the Bible tells us we are called to make disciples. Well, maybe you don't know the first place to start in making a disciple, but God has put somebody in your life that you're supposed to deal with and try to help become closer to Christ. You can use RUADisciple.com as a, a curriculum for yourself, for material. You too can go through the lessons and go through the study guides and learn about Christ. We're building on it every week, and we just hope you can use it and have some benefit from it. And before I go today, I want to be sure you know that we're certainly willing to pray for you at ipray.world. Just go to that site, let us know how we can pray for you, or maybe you want to become somebody that prays for others. If you want to, go to that site and sign up. We'd love to have more and more people praying. God responds to prayer, right? Well, I want to tell you today that God loves you. But when you think about that, don't think just about the fact that he has that warm and fuzzy feeling for you and he loves you like uh, an emotional response. When you think about how God loves you today, I want you to think about how God demonstrated his love by, even though the fact is true, we're not lovely, God still sent Jesus Christ to die, the ultimate sacrifice, to die for us so that we might be reconciled to God through him. That's love. So your love today, and my encouragement to you is that you get out there and love somebody else in the same way. God bless you. Serve him well today. I'll see you tomorrow.